The ruins are not accessible by car, so the last leg of our journey will be on foot. Getting closer, it's becoming apparent that the church was a large and imposing structure. Let's circle around and have a general view. The church had two entrances, the main one to the front and the secondary one to the left of the altar. Facing the main entrance to the wooden bell tower, now only its wooden pillars remain. The roof, the floor and the wall paintings are long gone. What remains are the large walls, built out of sturdy bricks and more than 70 centimeters thick. Some of the architectural details are still visible, vaulted structure for the roof, arched windows and some structural metal fittings. Now let's talk a little about this lost village and its tragic fate. Founded more than 200 years ago, at first the village thrived, peaking at more than 1,500 inhabitants. Over time, the villagers built a church, a large school, a mill, a general store and two taverns. But the prosperity of the village shattered during the First and the Second World Wars when the inhabitants found themselves on the front line, with their houses being completely destroyed during the fights. Rebuilt twice, after the Second World War, the village faced the arrival of communism, which brought with it the confiscation of the land and forced collectivization. The final act in this tragedy happened in 1970, when a massive flood engulfed the village and destroyed most of it. In the aftermath of the flood, the locals decided to abandon the village and settle elsewhere. Over time, the remains of the streets and houses were leveled down and plowed over by the communist authorities, with the exception of the church and its graveyard. Because yes, scattered near the church there are grave markers, some standing, some fallen, the only tangible reminders of people who never left this land. The majority of the crosses can be found in the small overgrown graveyard situated some distance away from the church, but more crosses are encountered and unearthed yearly by tractors during agricultural works. Most of the crosses situated in the cemetery are more than 100 years old and they are ornated with intricate funerary carvings. Let's take a look at some of them.
The crosses encountered and gathered from time to time during agricultural works are brought here, in a corner of the cemetery, and unceremoniously dumped in a pile. So this is the condensed sad story of these ruins. Unfortunately, this area is literally in the middle of nowhere and has no attractions of economic value other than agriculture. Hopefully in the future things will change, because looking carefully one will find that this place is interesting and has a lot of things to offer to someone with a trained eye. In the meantime, I am preparing my departure and I would like to invite to explore my YouTube channel to like and subscribe. Hoping that you enjoyed our little expedition, I wish you all the best and goodbye.